Hi there. Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. As you can see, we got the wrecker back into the garage here. And to be honest with you, we already got the rear axle and rear suspension fixed. That's because we're under a little bit of a time crunch here. See, we have another event to go to this weekend. And we also ran into another problem on the wrecker that we need to fix. We'll get to that in a little bit. Of course, by the time you see this video, that event will be done and gone. It'll be like last weekend for you. Something, yeah, something like that. Anyway, before we show you what we did to fix the rear end, let's go take a look at the lift blocks and what happened to those. Okay, here's the old lift blocks from the wrecker. And I know a bunch of you have commented about you shouldn't use lift blocks and how they're dangerous and all that stuff. And there is a little bit to be said about that, but it is a cheap, inexpensive way uh, to lift a truck. So that's part of the reason why we used them to begin with. Because as usual, even when we built the wrecker the first time, we were kind of under a time crunch to try and get it ready for an event. Let's take a little bit closer look at the lift blocks here. These are cast iron lift blocks that come with most of your lift kits for old square bodied trucks like this. And uh, if you look at, uh, we kind of ruined them when they came spitting out. This one's all busted up now and uh, shaved off on there, shaved off here. And the pins, pins are sheared off that hold them into place. One of the problems with these blocks, um, for especially for the wrecker is, is if you look, uh, better on this one, they're tapered. And that's to tip your pinion up. On uh, short wheelbase trucks, that's what you want. You want to tip the pinion up a little bit to uh, keep the rear U-joint from having too much of an angle on it and binding. But because the wrecker has a little bit longer wheelbase, we didn't really need to tip the pinion up. But this was what was available, so that's what we used. Now, there are better ways to lift up the back end of an old square bodied truck like this. And believe me when I say I've visited all of those ideas, even back when I was originally building the wrecker. And the majority of those ways require quite a bit of fabrication. Because this is a wrecker, uh, some of those <clears throat> modifications or some of that fabrication may or may not hold up real well to the lateral forces that the wrecker goes through when towing one out of the woods. Not to mention the fact that we got to keep a pretty high spring rate in the back of the wrecker to be able to pick up some of those trail trucks. One of the things some of you have suggested would be a shackle flip. And yes, that's a common way to lift the rear end of one of these trucks. But I have a little bit of a problem with doing that on the wrecker. Shall we take a look? If you can see this, the back of the leaf spring and the shackle is tucked up in there underneath the wrecker bed in a pretty tight spot. Let's look at it from the bottom. Here we go. Please excuse all the mud. We haven't had a chance to wash it yet. But anyway, you can see if we were to do a shackle flip, we'd have to modify the box on the wrecker a little bit. And, well, we're just not ready to do that. Also, if we were just to move the mount down to give us our lift, again, we would also have to modify the back end of the wrecker bed a little bit. Not to mention the fact that we would also have to move and modify our stops for our slipper spring on both ends down. And that would require quite a bit more fabrication. So anyway, again, we decided against that idea just simply because we don't have the time to fabricate everything that we need. Some of you have also mentioned about using a softer spring with a higher arc and then using some sort of airbag type system to carry the extra load when we need it. And to be honest with you, that's a great idea. Scuba and, I think Randy's Wrecker, both utilize that type of system. But, again, we don't have the time to fabricate and make all of that for this Wrecker before the next event. And I have one other little issue about that. See, I've been watching Scuba's and Randy's Wrecker wheel. And, with that type of setup, they haven't had any problems, but boy, they look unstable quite often. And I don't know if I'd like that. I do have an idea, however, to eventually build a tow truck or a wrecker with a really unique suspension that would work very well. But my pockets aren't quite deep enough yet. So 
Someday we might do that. It would be kind of a combination between uh, the suspension on the rear of a desert race truck and uh, something a little heavier. Well, anyway. So, for the time being, we did put some lift blocks back in. But we did not go with the tapered lift blocks that are sold with a regular lift kit. We fabricated our own this time. Should we take a look? What we did this time is we made some lift blocks without taper. And because nobody had any available for this application in the heights that I wanted without any taper, I had to fabricate my own. We used some rectangular tubing and uh, welded a half inch plate on both ends of it, drilled a hole in the top for the spring center bolt, and put an Allen bolt in the bottom for the pin on the uh, rear axle spring pad. Now, the old tapered lift blocks, they lasted in there for about nine years. So, hopefully, these will last quite a while. The big trick and secret to keeping lift blocks in, though, is to re-torque them after you put them together. Drive the vehicle around a little bit and re-torque it, just like we have to do with the wheel spacers. So, even though the lift blocks aren't the best way to do it, that's what we're doing for now, because we don't have time to fabricate anything else. And, like I say, the first set lasted about nine years of the wrecker, towing stuff out of the woods. Now should we take a look at the other problem I ran into? Oh, by the way, some of you have also commented about how it looks like uh, my frame is bending again because the gap here between the cab and the box looks like it's widening up. Well, don't worry, it's not the frame. See, in uh, my haste, because we were trying to get ready for an event, when I put the box on, the new chassis, well, I was off a little bit in my measurements. And uh, this uh, part of the box right here is supposed to be just below this body line. Well, I kind of screwed up and I made it a little too tall. And then uh, the back end is where it's supposed to be. So that kind of gives the box a little bit of a rake. Uh, makes the gap look here look a little goofy. Uh, don't worry, it's not the frame bending. It's my mistake. Someday, maybe I'll get around to fixing it. So here's our other problem. Yes, it's the dreaded problem that uh, a lot of Chevrolet Dana 60s have, some of the Dodges too, where the two bolts uh, that hold the uh, inside of the passenger front spring uh, to the axle uh, have come loose. Actually, we pulled the threads out of this hole right here, so we're going to have to drill it out and put a helicoil, a thread repair kit in there. Um, but one other thing that we also did uh, to help prevent it from happening again or uh, to give it a little bit more strength is we took and modified our U-bolt pad here uh, cut the knob off of this and drilled a hole in there drilled another hole in the casting I'll give you a closer look here see we modified the top of this took the little knob off of it you can see the knob on the other one here sticking up <coughs> Took the knob off of it and drilled a hole on our drill press and drilled a matching hole in the, uh, in the casting here. Um, so we're going to add an extra bolt to hold this together. And we got to get all this done by Friday so we can go to our next event. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, stay safe, and maybe we'll see you out there in the woods.